how much should I charge for a web design for a website with one page, with three pages? This is one of the most common questions I get all the time. And in this video, I want to address how you should think about this. Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Ron Segal. I'm a freelance designer. I've been building a website for about 15 years right now. And so I get this question a lot, how much should you charge for a website? And I wanna address it in this video, even though you're probably looking, if you're looking for an easy answer, like $3,000, you're not gonna find it here. But let's start with kind of like the bottom line, and then I'll elaborate into some practical things that you should be using on the next proposal that you send for a website project. First answer, like short answer, you should charge as much as you possibly can because as Jay-Z said, which I really believe, I don't know if it's his quote, is you don't get what you're worth, you get what you negotiate. So your goal should be to get as much money as you possibly can. Now let's talk about how to do that. So basically, for, let's start with the fact that there are no fixed prices like three page website should cost this or that. Every client is different. Every website is different. Complexity of the project is different. The visuals are gonna be different. Some of them require you to work with professional photographers or illustrators or animators, or some, some of them, uh, you need content writers. Some of them are gonna take you, you know, I've been working on websites that have only one page, but I've been working on them for months. So it really, you can't really narrow it down to some kind of a menu with, with fixed items, right? That's, that's the first thing. There is no really easy way. But here's how you should think about this. So first of all, you need to know your costs, which means how much does it really cost you to work on this project? And you need to estimate this based knowing how much you wanna, like what's your salary or what's your rate? How much do you, if you're gonna work on this full time for three months now, right? Then what's your salary times three? This is your cost. I'm not saying that you should, this should be the um, the price that you give your, your clients out of two reasons. One, maybe you need to charge a lot more. Maybe they can and wanna pay a lot more. Or two, maybe they should pay a lot less and they don't care about the fact that you are gonna work on this three months. There's no value for that for them. But you need to know this because this is going to be your minimum price for the project. Less than that, you're actually losing money and you shouldn't do that unless you're a student, you're living with your, you know, with your parents or you're working full time somewhere else and you're just doing this uh, as a portfolio piece, in which case that doesn't really matter. You don't, you don't really have to calculate those prices. But if you are into doing, you know, freelancing full time and you need to really rationalize, make sure that you're not losing money, you have to know your initial cost. Once you know that, you can start and try to negotiate more than that and figure out what is the worth in the client's eye, um, considering what they're trying to do here. And there's a lot of talk, obviously, if you've watched other videos on the internet about value pricing. Now, I do use value pricing, but not in the the normal or suggested um, way that they're talking about this. So usually when people talk about value pricing, it's something along the lines of, oh, so I'm going to help you make a website and this website is going to generate million dollar in sale. So I'm going to charge you 10% uh, of 1 million, which is $100,000. And obviously because I'm helping you generate $1 million, it makes sense that you're gonna pay me $100,000. Dollars. That's the usual kind of value pricing spiel. I've never actually done it this way. Um, for me, value pricing is understanding what it's worth in their mind. Sometimes it's related to how much money they're going to make. Other times it's what, what are their alternatives, right? So for example, if they're considering working with me versus working with a big agency, in that case, just the fact that this, so that's their benchmark in that case. They're about to spend what a typical agency uh, charges, which might be $100,000, $200,000. So in that case, since their price is anchored that way, um, I can price based off that. Now, price anchoring, which I just mentioned, um, is kind of like what is 
what your the number that's in your client's head, which you should either know what's in their head uh, based on knowing who the, who they also talk to, or you can try to put that number in their head and you know talking to them about uh, the 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 possible sales coming from the website is a one way of trying to put a huge number in their head to anchor a huge value so that you whatever you say afterwards whatever price you say um, is going to look lower to that again there are there are multiple ways to do that you don't only have to talk about sales it can be also mentioning what the alternatives are for example if you're going to work with a huge agency this is what it's going to cost you um so you try to anchor a really high price point and then price re relative to that make it look like like a great deal to them but at the end of the day it does comes down to negotiation and trying this is kind of an experimental um, process right so you're gonna say a number if you don't if, if the clients is going to um, resist you on that maybe you're gonna negotiate and end up somewhere else but if the client doesn't negotiate doesn't negotiate or doesn't push back that actually tells you that you can raise your prices right you always want to feel a little bit of resistance you want you want them to buy but you want them to have a little bit of resistance so you know you're at the top of what they're willing to pay you that's okay that's okay even if they ask you for a little even if you're trying to push your prices up and they you know they give you some kind of a rejection and you have to lower it or you, you say okay you know what i'll give you a discount for five percent you still know that you know they're willing to pay that and you always want to push it up so it's a process because hopefully every project you're going to test a higher price and a higher price and a higher price until you reach that really um, limit where you can't really charge those prices and that just let me tell you this can be ridiculously higher than what you're thinking about right now um, and I've had so many people over the years where I've I've been talking to them about this and then next time they had to give a proposal they just like doubled their price and there was still no rejection so it's a lot of times for us creatives we're already negotiating ourselves down in kind of like ah no way they're going to pay this when actually they are um, willing to pay the price now i'm not just saying you can say whatever price you want without any um, return on it obviously you need to know how to deliver good work obviously if you have a good brand and a good brand as somebody who designs website might be a great portfolio might be great testimonials might be even a great office or space where you can ha host your clients and impress them in that way all those things obviously help you to charge more or um, at least bring in clients who are more um, accepting or want or even inclined to pay higher prices because they want to work with somebody who's top level so those things matter um, but as I said in the beginning basically it comes down to your negotiation skill and it is a lot of kind of like mental you have to prepare yourself it's it's like this magic if you don't believe yourself if you're saying my price is ten thousand dollars and you don't believe it they can see it it's not gonna work if you're gonna if you're come coming down there and saying like hey this is ten thousand dollar and it's a great deal and here's why bam 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 and it looks like you've done that multiple times even if you're not even if you're like fake it till you make it so you know you have to believe it to make it work um, and it, it is something that you have to practice it is something that you have to experiment with it's not like you're gonna watch this video now you figure out that the, the ultimate price the right price is twenty thousand dollar and you're gonna nail it out of the park the next time um, it's going to be a process it's going to be experimenting it's going to be sometimes you fail sometimes you win but once you get once you won once once you've had somebody pay you ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollar for a website your mind is like oh my god this is really possible now I can do it again you just need to see that it's possible it's really helpful to see people around you um, who do this that's why I also try to be um, open and transparent about how much I charge and how much you know uh, I, I make per year just to make you, you see that it's possible then you can understand that you can do it as well hope this was helpful for you guys um, if you want to see what more videos about web design, about running freelance business and the business of design, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video.